Hey everyone, uh, welcome back after the break. Um, now we will have a session with uh, Jon Lerdal. Uh, he was properly introduced yesterday. Um, he's at the University of Oslo and will lead the session. We have had a test team uh, running Rosetta Fold uh, and Alpha Fold version 2 at the uh, University of Oslo machines. Uh, they have uh, tried out some, some new protein sequences, some new protein structures. Um, so I think if I have understood correctly, Jon, that you will show some, some new structures now and that we should uh, also uh, discuss them. Um, if people want to ask questions, please use the Q&A. If you want to discuss, you can discuss among you in, in, in the chat. I think also for this session that we could open the microphone for you. So if you have uh, questions that you want to uh, ask uh, orally, please take your hand up uh, and, and then I will open your microphone. Uh, so with that, I think I will leave the floor to you, uh, Jon. Thank you. Okay, so uh, here, let me see here. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, this is uh, still me. Um, this meeting uh, went from 30 Norwegian, uh, mainly AI scientists who wanted to know about uh, protein structures last um, uh, Thursday, I think, to uh, several hundred people, experts on protein structure prediction uh, from uh, Otago in New Zealand to Peru, as I saw yesterday. So um, I had taken on uh, task to talk about some some uh, predictions uh, and it became a, a bit of a, a daunting task so uh, we had limited time to do this uh, and also uh, limited uh, experience these tools uh, the papers have only been around for uh, slightly more than a month and the um, installation here in Oslo has uh, only been up for a few days uh, so, so bear with me if I do something uh, very silly here. Also, this uh, preparation was finished uh, last night at three o'clock in the morning, so uh, it might be some uh, typos and uh, it's not so polished as it could have been. I might say something that are uh, misleading, not exactly correct or completely wrong. And uh, if I do, uh, please correct me, comment in the Q&A. Uh, or raise your hand and, and class will, will uh, watch the Q&A and, and watch and let you in. So we'll try to, to have a discussion. Some comments, questions uh, might be better answered by someone else. So we'll, we'll try to, to make a discussion out of this. Okay. Um, as we have heard other people say, the goal here is to get biological insight, to get the answer to, to biological questions. It's not necessary to have every single atom in exactly the right place, which uh, you might think if you're uh, coming into this field from the, from the sort of computer science field. At the same time, it's, it's no point in a model that gives you no insight at all. It can't be used for uh, getting any biological insight. Um, and the quality you need depends on, on what you want to know. For example, if this is the protein structure, if you want to decide to de design a drug-like molecule that can bind in the active site and possibly become a, a drug that blocks enzyme function, then you need a very uh, accurate highly accurate structure. Basically, in the active site region, all the side chains, all the atoms, all the residues have to be in exactly the right position. You're going to, to design 
a molecule that fits in there. But to find out where on the surface the active site is, that's a much simpler task. You don't need a very accurate structure. If you want to understand how this protein binds to this one, how they are docking together, if you want to, to, to dock that on the surface to see where it binds, is going to require good models for both of them. But if you just want to know where on the surface, which patch is interacting with this, then you don't need a very accurate structure. So it's biological insight, which is the clue here. Uh, one statement, there's no need to model structures that already are known from experiments. Uh, as we saw yesterday, roughly 17% of the residues in the human proteome, they are already mapping to an experimentally solved structure. Also, sequences that are very similar, for example, 80 to 90% identical residues, maybe even 60 to 70% identical residues, encodes basically identical structures, 3D structures. So nearly all chimpanzee proteins are structurally identical to the corresponding human protein. They don't really, in this case, need to solve these structures or model them. <clears throat> but is this really correct? Always. Uh, certainly there are arguments against it. Maybe modeling can give you even more accurate structures than the experiments. For example, some of these experiments here are poor resolution X-ray structures, cryo-EM structures from 10 years ago, really very inaccurate structures. Segments may be missing from the experimental structures. Um, and modeling can give you structures of all domains in a protein and their packing. For example, here is a little protein with two domains. If the experimental structures is only for this on its own and this on its own, uh, modeling can show you how they will interact. So uh, the uh, AlphaFold human protein proteome database that we heard about uh, yesterday from uh, Samir Valenkar is, is uh, modeling all human proteins, basically. Also those that have uh, already experimental structures and it, it makes sense. Uh, we have heard about template-based modeling where you model the 3D structure using structures in of related proteins in the PDB. And this is uh, not new at all. It's been used with great success for decades. Uh, so you can easily model the target here, this protein from this experimental structure, this template with homology modeling. And this is the most uh, accurate type of the template-based modeling. Because in this case, the target and the template have sequence identity of roughly 30% or, or better. And we can model maybe this one from this structure, this template, with the so-called fold recognition or threading, which is not so accurate template-based modeling. Uh, and in this case, the target and the template may have little or no significant sequence identity. And uh, how good is really uh, AlphaFold and uh, RosettaFold compared with traditional homology modeling, threading? Uh, and uh, that is, uh, I'll show you some examples uh, later. Uh, and, and this is what people will explore in the months to come. So, of course, the really hard modeling, but also uh, Ming Jung uh, Beck told us about this morning, is the template free modeling. 3D structure modeling, when there are no experimental structures in the same superfamily here as the target. I want to model this, but there are no experimental structures here. And this is a very hard problem. And basically, it was. Uh, 
more or less unsold until uh, la late last year. Uh, and very few in the field expected this problem to be anywhere near solved really soon. Last year, I've been teaching in various courses at the University of Oslo uh, twice every year, the last uh, 10 years or something like that. Um, homology modeling, template-based uh, modeling, and so on. And when it comes to template-free modeling, I basically said, uh, forget about it. Doesn't work. You don't get biological insight from the structures. Maybe a bit uh, provocative, but at least the models you got were not useful for much. So it was a huge surprise when AlphaFold had these impressive uh, results at, as, uh, at, at CASP 14. It was just uh, two weeks after I had told uh, 50 students to, to forget about it. It will not happen the next decade. So you've seen this already, really no progress. And up here close to uh, experimental results for AlphaFold 2 at cost 14, especially this uh, template-free modeling, the hardest task where you, oh, these cases here, a GDT, median GDT of 87. So uh, after cost 14 and the presentation there that also Ming Jung Beck uh, told us about this morning, uh, at least for me and most people in the field, uh, we were just waiting for the alpha called uh, paper. And it finally came out uh, in the summer, in the middle of our, at least in Norway, summer holiday. It came out in uh, the August 26th issue of Nature, so just last week, but the, it was released online on July the 15th. And we have heard about this several times. Uh, it's full details about the algorithm, source code available, and their open source license. And uh, I think the impression from this meeting and uh, other people. Uh, and uh, this guy, Mohamed al uh from Columbia University, who's a competitor in a way, has worked in this field for a long time. All in all, I'm very happy with how DeepMind handled this, is uh, he's saying in his blog. And I think that's uh, many people are. Also at the uh, back-to-back in that uh, issue of Nature last week, came this uh, AlphaFold Protein Structured Database paper that uh, Samir Olenkar talked about yesterday, where you have AlphaFold predictions for 98.5% uh, of the human protein. 36% of residues covered by a prediction with very high confidence. 58% confident prediction. So exactly what this means uh, can of course be discussed and it will be explored in the years to come. And this is uh, of course then a partnership between uh, DeepMind and uh, Emble EBI and available here. I'll, I'll come back to this. And of course then, Rosetta Fold paper also came out, released on July the 15th. Uh, and as we have heard, both Rosetta Fold uh, and Alpha Fold is installed uh, and running on uh, Fox. Um, cluster, Saga, the Sigma 2, uh, infrastructure and the machine learning nodes at the University of Oslo. By the way, uh, in the methods paper here, they uh, really don't use the name AlphaFold2 at all. They call it throughout AlphaFold. So I guess that uh, at least DeepMind wants to uh, call it AlphaFold and not one and two see how this uh, works out. So I tried to make some cases. And of course, uh, 
you can just click here and uh, look at lots of predictions for the full human proteome and uh, 20 more uh, organisms. So uh, I promised class to try to make something that was not already done. So uh, here, Sedamonas, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, it's a, a bacteria. It's not yet in the AlphaFold structure database. So this hasn't been modeled before, at least not uh, released. Uh, it's a medically important bacterium, often multi-drug resistant and with advanced antibiotic resistant uh, mechanisms. So it's, it's very important for uh, uh, studying uh, antibiotic resistance. Uh, MAGC is one protein encoded by a gene here. It's quite a small protein. When we started looking at this last week, it was not completely clear how fast the predictions were on the UIO infrastructure. Uh, initially, we thought uh, it would take several days to run one job. As uh, Fabri showed you earlier today, it only takes uh, for some of these, for most of these jobs, uh, an hour or two or less. So we showed a small protein. It has a signal peptide, which is uh, removed, and then it's uh, 192 residues left. Uh, the reason I, why I chose this was that the structure of this was uh, released and published in this paper this summer. And it was released in the PDB on the July 21st. So I hoped that uh, the predictions from AlphaFold for the structure uh, and for uh, ZetaFold that we would run would not know about this structure because it had been released uh, very recently. So that the predictions could not learn from the structure. Um, and also, MAGC has a structure and sequence that is not uh, similar to any previously known structure. So it's uh, basically, it's certainly in a new protein family, possibly also in a new superfamily. So for example, if you uh, do a BLAST search, you just take that sequence, search for similar sequences in the sequences corresponding to the PDB structures. And of course it finds itself now, but the second best hit, which is the best one you would have found in June or in the spring, is this one and this one with an E value of uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.5. So uh, a very short segment might be a random hit. So basically in June, it was not possible to do homology modeling accurate template-based modeling to determine the structure of MAGC. Because if you wanted to model this, you did not have a structure in that family. Uh, so there are no other, except from itself, structures in the PDB that have a significant sequence similarity to MAGC. It represents, represents a new uh, protein domain family. Uh, I will just uh, oh, I can't see my I opened the Q and A and now I can't get rid of it. It's on top here. Okay. So while um The problem is that I can't see my uh, own presentation here now. Yes. 
at least you on um, i can uh, watch the q a and if you're able to click them down or then uh, yeah okay finally here yeah <clears throat> so um yeah in in structural bioinformatics we usually say that with blast you can find the other members in that uh, protein family so if you take uh, this sequence do a blast search you will find all the members in that family if you instead search with uh, the structure in a structure database in the pdb you can find more remote homologs with a common ancestor further back where there is less similarity, maybe no similarity in, in the sequence, but still similarity in structure. And Dali from Lisa Holm in Helsinki is a great, uh, well, very well known tool. So here I took this now released structure and, and, and um, searched in the PDB for similar structures. And of course, the best hit is itself, it finds itself. But that's only been there since uh, July. The other hits here have a uh, set scores of 12, 10, which is not very good. Um, so there are really no other structures in the PDB that have a very similar structure as MAGC. So it possibly represents a new protein domain superfamily. Uh, this can be discussed, but uh, at least there are very If these are in the same protein superfamily or not, uh, do these have the same common ancestor gene as MAGC? I think people will, will argue about that. But in June 2021, fold recognition would very likely not give a good model for MAGC. So uh, if you look at the, the third hit here, uh, you can see a uh, sequence alignment based on the structural alignment. And you see here the query, that's MAGC, the subject, that's this 2EBR structure. And um, it's really, this is the sequence, this is the sequence, where you have a bar here, that's where you have identical residues. So it's something like 21 of 191 one, residues align here. Sequence identity of very roughly 10, 11%, so it's very poor. Uh, when I can't do uh, traditional uh, homology modeling with the Swiss model, for example, I often turn to FIRE2, which is a great, well-known, well-tested, I call it a fold recognition program, they call it themselves a homology modeling program. At least it can find more remote homologs and do remote homology, homology detection compared to, for example, a Swiss model. And uh, on August 30th, when I ran this uh, calculation, it uh, builds uh, the model for MAGC on itself. So obviously it. Fire 2 knows about this structure of MAGC. So it builds a perfect model in a way. But uh, this structure was uh, released in July, as I said. The second best uh, model is based on 2EVR, which is uh, this one. And uh, 20, roughly 10% sequence identity. And this model here, this one is, uh, I claim, very close to the best possible model one could make for MAGC in June this year without looking at the uh, Fold or AlphaFold 2. Uh, so, so traditional template-based modeling is, this is uh, very close to the best you could get. So my plan was to show you that model. Okay, here. So <clears throat> the structure itself is here. 
and this uh, tire two model is here. So yeah, as you see, it has uh, this alpha helix here. It has this beta sheet here, but uh, it's missing the rest of the beta sheet. It has these two alpha helices. These two are completely missing. These two alpha helices are missing. By the way, here we show, or I show, the alpha helices as, as cylinders. And the green tubes here, that's the loops. So here, uh, this is a uh, claim, a, a model of a limited uh, usefulness. It's big chunks missing here. If you show the, show the surface, uh, big chunks of the protein is, is actually missing. So that's the best uh, template-based model. So uh, Sabri and uh, Jonas, they had uh, installed uh, AlphaFold 2 and RosettaFold on UIO hardware last week, mainly uh, Sabri uh, installing uh, and, and with his team. And thanks a lot to these two guys for, for running the jobs for me. So I actually didn't even run the jobs myself because I didn't have time to, to get into this. And uh, they ran this uh, through the weekend. Also, uh, the last results I got, asked uh, Sabri last night at 10 o'clock, I got the results at uh, half past 11 and uh, more results this morning. So thanks a lot. Um, so this is the AlphaFold 2 model for MagC. It's been run on UIO infrastructure by Jonas and Sabri. Uh, so Fire 2 did know about this structure. It just copied basically that structure as a prediction for the MagC structure. Thus, uh, AlphaFold 2 running on the UIO infrastructure this weekend know about this structure. I'm pretty sure it does not. Um, when I go through the logs, I can see that the running logs, I can see that the AlphaFold is basing uh, the predictions on a number of PDB structures. For example, uh, this one, but not this one. So this prediction is as it would have been in June 2021. And if I'm uh, mistaken here, correct me, but I think this is correct. The prediction does not know about this structure. Uh, at least it's certainly not just copying the structure as, as Fire is doing. Um, so in the output, uh, you get uh, at least uh, two models unrelaxed and relaxed model. So here, if I uh, put them on top of each other, You see that they are, at least uh, when you look at the backbone, uh, basically completely identical. Uh, but if you show uh, show six here, oh, hide everything. Well, do here. Color like this, then you see that there are uh, here you have all the heavy atoms here as well, but here you in addition have uh, hydrogens. So here all hydrogen atoms have been added, and this is the relaxed structure. And what is that? Um, 
you read the AlphaFold methods paper, they write that uh, exact enforcement of peptide bonding geometry is only achieved in the post-prediction relaxation of the structure by gradient descent in the ambit force field. So they're doing some kind of molecular uh, mechanics type related energy minimization. But importantly, this final relaxation does not improve the accuracy of the model as measured by the GDT or IADDD C alpha, but it does remove distracting stereochemical violations without the loss of accuracy. So some obvious uh, clashes and collisions are, are uh, you get rid of, but it actually doesn't really improve the model. For example, here, uh, this is uh, acidic group here, which has been uh, slightly rotated here, here. But actually most of the, Side chains, they are uh, really in the most more or less identical conformations. So, how good is the model then? So here is in green, this is the actual structure. And this is the relaxed model from AlphaFold 2 that uh, Sabri and, and Jonas ran for me in the weekend. And you see, it's really quite impressive. Uh, especially compared to the fold recognition uh, fire 2 template based model here. So and you can put them on top of each other. Like this. So of course here at the this is the end terminus. Here you have a, a flexible floppy little part of the protein. Very likely it doesn't have a 3D structure at all here. It's moving around a lot. So here Structures are different, but uh, otherwise, I think this is very uh, impressive. Okay, I see some uh, better stop. Uh, if there is anything I should uh, answer, Klaus. So, um, Jonas and Sabri also ran uh, Rosetta fold for the same protein. Um here you get, or I got already on Monday, <clears throat> five models. Um, and also here, I think that uh, Rosetta Fold does not know about this structure that was released in July. So the prediction is as it would have been when this structure was unknown in June. Uh, here, the, the so-called model five is apparently the most accurate with some energy uh, parameter. And the estimated uh, RMS error is found in the B factor field. So, so there's an estimate of, of uh, where you can trust the model and where you can't trust it. The blue is uh, trustable, the green is less so, and the red is really not trust. And this is in the little tail at the end terminus here. So how good is this? Jon, we have yeah. uh, maybe some questions. Uh, I would uh, ask maybe if, if any panelists want to turn on their camera uh, and discuss and, and ask questions, that would be very good. Uh, I can see that uh, 
Randy. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Randy. So you could. Uh, I will turn my camera off, and you and you can discuss with Jon uh, and ask him uh, has, ask him your question. Thank you. Yeah, um, I was trying to post something in the Q and A, but I can't do that as a panelist. Um, what I was wondering is whether you run HH pred on the mag C sequence. So I, I just tried that, and it turns out that HH pred's database was updated last on the thirteenth of July, I think. So it doesn't include mag C, and it does find a number of proteins that share at least part of the same fold if you superimpose them. Yeah. No, I didn't uh, run that. I only tried the fire. Uh, but also, that also sort of predicts part of the structure. OK, but uh, large chunks of it not. So it'd be interesting to know whether fire found the same templates that um, HHPRED um, identifies. Uh, I, I think it uh, it would. And it's also actually in, in that uh, in the Magsi paper, they show some related structures there, mm. which is also the same that Fire is, is finding. I also used the uh, vast algorithm at the NCBI that uh, instead of DALI, and it also found uh, some templates. Yeah. Yeah. But the WASP did not have uh, the MAGSI uh, database uh, in its database, at least not in the weekend. OK, thanks. Yeah, so let me see here now. There. This is then the Rosetta fold. structures. Shown here. Um, and here you see how, how similar they are. And in the blue high confidence region, they are really similar. In the green red parts, you have some slightly different backbone conformations here, but not a lot. And here is the shell structure itself, which is also so. So also Rosetta Fold gives a a good model. It was five. That was the best supposed to be the best. Here. So both alpha fold, Rosetta fold gives good full length models for this. Um, definitely better than uh, template based, based uh, methods, I, I, I think. So here, this is the experimental structure. Homology modeling was uh, this uh, traditional simple homology modeling was not possible at all in June. Um, the, something that is uh, not far from the best possible traditional template-based model here. Parts are okay, large parts not. And this is the Rosetta Fold model and the Alpha Fold 2 model. Very similar and very similar to the experimental structure. Also, uh, we heard uh, Samir Valenkar talked about it yesterday, and we had questions in the chat. Alpha Fold is also producing several models, for example, five models. So, uh, Sabri sent me these five models for, from the AlphaFold 2 prediction he ran last night. And you see that they, these uh, five models that AlphaFold 2 produces, they are really very similar. These are also similar, but not to the same degree.
Okay, so then I have a new uh, case. Uh, is there anything I should uh, we should discuss here? I think this shows that, uh, in a way, the step from template-based modeling, that is uh, what you could do a year ago, to sort of set up fold and alpha fold now. It's quite uh, impressive for this uh, uh, sorry, sorry, bacterial uh, protein. Sorry to interrupt you, Jon. Uh, question from Gustavo Santos. Uh, can you place the alpha fold model, uh, Rosetta model, and experimental structure aligned so that we can have a look uh, at them? Yeah, I could, of course, do that. Uh, but I think it's, uh, yeah, these are pictures of them. Uh, when I align the best uh, Rosetta fold model with experiment, I get a certain RMSD. When I take the alpha fold two model and align it to the experimental structure, I get a slightly better RMSD. But uh, we set up this system last uh, Thursday or something like that. Ran it. Uh, I haven't even uh, been running the calculations myself. I am not going to uh, claim that alpha fold two is better than the set fold here even if uh, the RMSD comparing these seem to show that this is slightly better. Uh, but this still is, is a fantastic progress compared to, to this. I also think that uh, you can find these uh, PDB files in the <coughs> GitHub page that uh, Sabri sent uh, a link to in this presentation. You can ask Sabri about that. Another question, uh, if you yeah. can take a couple of questions here because they are coming yeah. up here now. Uh, Enrico uh, Riccardi, um, do AlphaFold give only a, a structure or also some sort of probability distribution of it uh, as several uh, structures seems to be predicted? Yeah, of course, it has this uh, residue by residue uh, quality score. Uh, but uh, again, my experience here is very limited. And I actually, uh, last night at 11 o'clock, when I wanted to make more cases, I couldn't manage to, to find, uh, to map that into the, into the at least the, the runs that I had available couldn't give me these quality scores for the MAGC model. I have that for uh, the next case, actually. So we'll see it there. Hmm. Uh, we will uh, go to the next question. Uh, thank you, uh, Johan. Uh, are the dissimilarities in the alpha fold model and Rosetta fold models related to regions of high dynamics and what about the variability in the regions within their own models well certainly the, the this tail here is uh, mostly uh, completely dynamical and structural so that's where you have the largest uh, errors and in the case of uh, Alpha fold when I, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's here. When you see also the largest differences are here, um, but still very, very small. So this is not uh, an ensemble that represents in any way structures that are, are visited. This is two small movements here. But I think I'll, I'll go on and uh, you get some more examples uh, here. This is uh, human cytomegalovirus. That's also a, a virus, an organism, a virus that is not in the AlphaFold structure database at the EBI currently. 
this is also medically important. Uh, most of you, if not all of you, already had a CMV infection. Usually you get it as a kid and you don't really notice it. Maybe it's just like a cold or you don't even notice it at all. But if you are uh, immunocompromised, for example, HIV infected, organ transplant uh, recipient who is taking an uh, immunosuppressant, uh, uh, it can be a, a life-threatening uh, infection. It's also, uh, when you had the infection, it became latent in your body, so it can be reactivated if you are HIV infected or uh, in other ways immunocompromised later. Uh, it's also a virus that is most uh, quite often frequently transmitted to the developing fetus, and it's uh, when the mother is infected or uh, by CMV during pregnancy, this can uh, lead to deafness, uh, intellectual disability, and so on in children. And it's actually one of the most common causes in uh, industrialized countries for this. So it's important to, to, to uh, study and, and treat if possible. CMV infection. And colleagues of mine at the Department of Microbiology, they, they study uh, cytomegalovirus, uh, especially when, with, uh, in relation to uh, HIV patients. HALI is a protein encoded by the DNA genome of this uh, virus. It's a component of the helicase primase complex. So it um, unwinds the DNA at the replication forks. So this is a, a motor protein that walks along the double-stranded DNA and uh, helps uh, uh, generating the replication fork and, and uh, helps uh, replication of the DNA. So if you could inhibit this protein, uh, you could uh, uh, at least uh, guess, uh, hope that it could be a uh, antiviral drug because the virus cannot uh, replicate. This has uh, 956 residues, so it's uh, almost a thousand residues, much uh, bigger. If you want to do this, try to block the function. It's certainly a good idea to have a 3D stru structure of, of this protein. Uh, if you try to search in uh, PDB sequences, you get no hits at all. So uh, homology modeling is not possible, not even uh, short segments actually. At least uh, that's what it seems like here. Uh, Swiss model repository is a big database of models where they have taken uh, huge fraction of, of uh, the sequences in the Uniprot database and try to make models for them. And uh, the last attempt was done in July. Only low quality models could be built. So homology modeling does not work. What about the uh, alpha fold? So Jonas and Sabri ran this for me. Uh, and here is the model imported into PyMol. And then I just imported the model into PyMol. And here, in this case, uh, we had uh, the uh, PLDDT score that has also been mentioned earlier, per residue confidence score in the B factor field. So I can color in PyMol according to B factor field. And that's what I've done here. Uh, this is, of course, specific to, to, to Py, PyMol, but many of you might be using that. If you look at the, uh, the models in the EBI uh, AlphaFold database, they look like this, where very high confidence is blue, very low confidence is, is orange. And here is actually opposite. When you do like this in, in uh, just color, default coloring, by the B-effective field here. So here the blue 
is low confidence, red is high confidence. Just to, to avoid uh, confusing you. Uh, and also, these guys ran the Rosetta fold to get this model. And here it's uh, blue high confidence, yellow, red, not confident. And here, of course, I, unlike uh, the, the, so the MUNAS protein, I have no 3D structure to compare with. The experimental structure is not known here. Uh, so here are the two models side by side. So apart from the fact that uh, here blue is good quality, here red is good quality, uh, one obvious thing is that they don't look uh, uh, that similar as, as MAGC did, for example. And what is this? Uh, So if you read the human proteome uh, of a cold paper, you can see that the uh, PLDDT, this score, per residue score for quality, is actually a, a good protein structure disorder predictor. So the blue parts here are most likely structurally disordered. And this is a direct quote, long regions with PLDDT less than 50, adopt a readily identifiable ribbon-like appearance. You see here, these ribbons here, 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 and should not be interpreted as structures, but rather as a prediction of structural disorder. So for alpha fold predictions, this doesn't mean that uh, it has this structure. It means that this part here is actually all over the place visiting lots of different confirmations. And the same with this and this. It doesn't have a 3D structure, but this part seems to have. Um, so I also uh, tried uh, to feed this uh, sequence to uh, Disopred 3, which is a great uh, intrinsically disordered region predictor from uh, David Jones and his group at the uh, University College, College London. Uh, he's a very central person in the structural biomimetics field. Uh, and this segment is predicted to be structurally disordered. This part, this part, this part, and it maps really well to the blue, these ribbons here. So uh, it makes a lot of sense. These are structurally disordered parts. So what I did then was to uh, just uh, take these parts that are, this is alpha fold, these vectors, these segments that are, are blue and green here, poor quality regions. I just uh, made a selection and um, show cartoon. So the disordered parts is this. And I hide everything there. And then color by a secondary structure. You now see that uh, the, these looks uh, 
much more like the same thing. It's quite similar here, here, uh, down here. There is a domain, possibly, and here it's uh, in a different conformation with respect to this top domain here. So clearly, it would have been uh, great here to have this kind of uh, PAE uh, illustration that shows which uh, domains are believed to be packing correctly and uh, which are not, as uh, Sam Samir Valenka talked about yesterday, but I couldn't find this in this uh, calculation at uh, two o'clock in the morning. But here, clearly, not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, a new question. Maybe it's from uh, Osman uh, Chenset. Osman, maybe you could... Uh... Ask, I have uh, given you the possibility to, to ask yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, uh, it may have been mentioned earlier, but um, have it been made any attempts to, to do some large scale investigations of how alpha fold, for instance, can predict protein protein interactions? Uh, it's it's a, I see uh, I have some experience myself and I see some examples here and there, but uh, I don't know if if it has been systematically done yet. Are you? I don't think uh, any attempts. Not uh, that I know about uh, anyway. Not uh, yet. Hmm. Uh, certainly, people are uh, doing that, but it's. Uh, I guess on Twitter, not in the scientific literature yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the the structured part here is uh, seem to be uh, similarly modeled, and of course, it's uh, impossible to say which model here is the best, since I don't have any real structure, experimental structure to to compare with. But one thing is, of course, that this, uh, if I hide everything and just show this uh, part here. This is the structure disordered part. Or if I uh, color that uh, red, show cartoon for everything. Uh, so as, as I mentioned, and also uh, Samir Valenkar mentioned for, for uh, Alpha Fold 2, these ribbons means that this is structurally disordered. So you are expected not to think that uh, it actually looks like this, but this is uh, all over the place, structurally disordered. Uh, but clearly here, uh, Rosetta Fold is, is uh, trying to make uh, a prediction for this and that, which is actually structurally disordered. So it's important to not think that this part of the structure is as accurate uh, and reliable as this part. Uh, then, you, of course, you have the, uh, the score here, which will tell you that you shouldn't trust this here and that this is more trustable. But still, uh, when I first saw these things here, I thought, oh, this is uh, annoying uh, because I'm used to sort of model domain by domain. And I've told my students that you should not try to model the 3D structure of something that doesn't have a structure. But now I've uh, looked at a few structures and it actually, uh, as long as you know that this is structurally disordered, it um, actually is not such a bad idea after all. Here you clearly see this is structurally disordered. Here people might be fooled into uh, thinking that, okay, this is 
a structure. This is actually not at all. It's completely structured disordered. And this is just one of thousands and hundreds of thousands of different conformations that this can be in. Yeah, so again, I think this is quite impressive. And uh, homology modeling was completely impossible here. So they look uh, very similar, these uh, structures. And here, now you can start sort of, uh, this is a, a motor protein. It is uh, walking a lot long uh, double-stranded DNA, helping replication. Uh, if you want to, to block the function, and it's using ATP as an energy source. So ATP is binding in a pocket, helping this walking along DNA. And uh, if we color now uh, like that, and we color this, Red, hide spheres, show sticks, color by this. Now we see that in both models you have a, an ATP binding pocket here, and you can start to, to wonder how does ATP bind here? where is uh, DNA being bound and so on. Because you have the structures. Good. Okay. Two more questions, uh, Jon, if you're yeah. ready for that. Or three, they're popping up here. Um, first, uh, Cynthia Perez, uh, does disordered regions do have a structure, just not the persistent one? Uh, uh, no. It's uh, oh, sorry. This is an uh, NMR structure. So it's uh, a structure determined in solution of a tiny little uh, sink finger. So we have a sink here. Uh, maybe we can color by a secondary structure. No, it doesn't work. Uh, so, but here is not just one structure, it's uh, 20 different structures. So here you have a core part here, you can instead show all these um, uh, movie, show all states here. So this uh, part here, interacting with the sink ion here, has a sort of a 3D structure, a regular 3D structure. It's a very short uh, beta strands and some loops. While the N and C terminus is all over the place. And this is just uh, 20 of a uh, huge amount of possible conformations. So, so it's like, this is flexible floppy all over the place. While only this has a regular 3D structure. So it, These loops here, they do not have a stable regular 3D structure. This loop is, is uh, moving around a lot. That's what structural disorder means. Of course, it's, uh, it's many types, as I talked about on one slide yesterday. It can be uh, that, uh, for example, when, when this binds double-stranded DNA, some of these loops click into place and become structured. 
that is uh, harder to predict. And Actually, uh, the David Jones uh, prediction here was that uh, this first part here is disordered, but it's binding to something it says here. Uh, disordered, but protein binding, this N terminus here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another question. Um, Yes, from Pedro Matias. Um, is this protein active as a monomer? And uh, the last protein you're, or the protein you're discussing now, I guess. Uh, many helices are hexamers. This is uh, part of a, a big complex. And I'm not sure it's even, uh, I don't think this is a hexamer. And I don't think it's uh, much known about, uh, it's only known which components are in the complex. I don't think it's known how they interact, how many copies of each protein and so on. It's actually very limited. The DNA of a DMV is quite big. So there are many proteins there that have not been studied properly yet. Another question uh, from yep. uh, Medi Davari. Um, a general question. Uh, is there a big improvement for more challenging structural prediction problems such as cofactor binding proteins and membrane proteins with alpha fold or rosetta fold also expected? Is there a big improvement for more challenging structural prediction? Um, membrane proteins are, uh, of course, difficult because they are uh, far too big for NMR. They are uh, often uh, very difficult to crystallize. So it's um, few structures, few templates in the PDB. Uh, cryo EM is uh, much more promising and it's uh, coming uh, a lot there. But it's for, for alpha fold, for example, it's uh, fewer structures to learn from. On the other hand, uh, transmembrane helix proteins, like, like you see here. <clears throat> so you have a membrane, roughly here, and you have alpha helices that goes through, then you have something and a new alpha helix going through. So people might uh, say this is wrong, but in one way, this is a simpler structure prediction problem than uh, the average uh, globular protein because it's alpha helices, 20 residue alpha helices, that you are supposed to pack in the right way. You don't have a much uh, beta strands, uh, beta sheets in here. Some cases you can have helices that go down and then have a loop and go up again, but that's also possible to predict and it's not that common. But in some ways, the structure prediction here, for example, based on, on uh, contact uh, and core variations due to contacts is simpler than many globular proteins. So then uh, these new methods, AI methods should be uh, quite good for um, transmembrane proteins, even if there are not that many structures to learn from. Yeah, I think that this uh, at least partially answered the question. And also, um, as we heard yesterday, AlphaFold doesn't know anything about the uh, cofactors or metal ions in zinc fingers or uh, post-translational modifications, uh, things like that. But still, uh, rather uh, miraculously, it seems to be quite good. 
a predicting like here from the AlphaFold methods paper. Here is a, the experimental structure in green with the sink here and uh, the alpha fold prediction with all the side chains here, even if alpha fold doesn't realize that there is a sink here. So this is quite uh, impressive and something I'm sure people will, will look more into. Uh, Okay, should I go on with the more cases? I uh, have a yes, we few. we have like nine minutes left, so please uh, spend the last yeah. nine minutes, and we will have a break at at one Norwegian time. Yeah. Uh, so, a third case uh, here is. Uh, not uh, something I found myself. It is basically an enzyme that is important for uh, glucose metabolism. Uh, and it's in the AlphaFold human proteom paper. It's uh, three case studies there, and this is the first of them. So this, of course, is. Uh, all human proteome, so it's uh, already in um, the AlphaFold database. Obviously, here. And here you see a typical entry, a really good one, actually, uh, with very high confidence except for this little tail, which I think is at the end terminus. Uh, and also you see here from this uh, PAE that uh, all, there are no several domains here with the dubious uh, packing. You can also, uh, Access this from Uniprot. Here, this is the reaction uh, uh, glucose with a phosphate group on it. Uh, and the phosphatase takes off that phosphate group like this. And it's uh, mentioned several uh, active site residues here. Uh, two of them are called binding site residues. So two are, they are all in the active site, really. Four of them. Um, down here is the structure. And that's now just a link to the alpha fold, just where we were. So from that paper, it's a membrane bound enzyme that catalyzes the final step in glucose synthesis. To our knowledge, no experimental structure exists and that's uh, certainly correct. Uh, previous attempts uh, to characterize the transmembrane topology. So people have uh, tried to find out how, how many transmembrane um, helices are there. And where is the active site? And they have a, a high confidence uh, prediction of uh, nine helix topology, so nine helices, and also uh, active site, putative active site, uh, which has a, a entrance through a tunnel. And uh, with the model, they can then find those active site residues that I told you about, and also uh, discover a new one that hasn't been mentioned before in the literature, a glutamate uh, 110. Uh, so 
So here, there's a, a movie showing the structure and showing this uh, tunnel entering to in, or get, giving access for uh, the substrate into the active site. So of course, there's no point on uh, modeling this again. It's done, uh, it's in all the database already, but uh, so it would be fun to, to just uh, run the Rosetta fold prediction. And that's uh, here. In my experience, uh, if uh, you have two unrelated bioinformatics predictors from different groups uh, using different methods and they give similar results, that's uh, usually a good sign. Okay. So here are now alpha fold in red and uh, model five, which is the best one from uh, Rosetta fold. Uh, again, with this uh, slightly odd coloring. Red is good quality here, blue is good quality here. And you see very similar structures. We can show uh, show spheres like this, and now you can start to look that there is actually a, a channel in here uh, with some active site residues. They are in there. This is uh, this glutamate 110, which they, based on this uh, new structure, showed is actually in the active site and is uh, very likely important for binding the substrate and important for catalysis. So now it's possible to, based on this structure, to better understand the catalysis taking place here. And it's um, also, as you see, a uh, very similar structure on the active site for the Rosetta fold and the alpha fold predictions. Not identical though. Uh, Slightly a different rupa uh, here for the right scene and so on. Yeah. Okay. Yes, this was uh, excellent, John. Um, are we ready then to have a lunch break? Or I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I will just then say thank you very much to you, Jon. You have been working a lot lately to, to uh, make this a, uh, as a good session to get with Sabri and Jonas, as you said. Um, very interesting to see new re results. Uh, after lunch, we will also have a very interesting session that will go more from into the future perspectives um, from structure to protein function and also drug design. Uh, so Victor uh, Greif will have a talk, uh, Jim Brace will have a talk, and we will have also a panel debate about future perspectives. So please be back in one hour. We will start uh, two o'clock uh, sharp uh, Central European time. Thank you. <laughs>